I am excited and also a little nervous, to be honest, to share this entire tummy tuck journey with you. I tried to be as transparent as possible and record as much as I could along the way. Uh, and I show you my final results. And at the end, I'll talk about all of my thoughts and feelings around how I'm doing now and processing it all. Before we get started, I do wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Element. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that everybody in our family uses. I take this unflavored version, which is literally just magnesium, sodium, and potassium, and I mix it in this giant 44 ounce water first thing in the morning. I can't even hardly taste any of the saltiness just because there's so much water in here with it. Uh, everybody else in my family loves the flavored versions. And you know what? I have actually been taking a half a pack of the flavored version and mixing it with some sparkling water for um, to have with my lunch. I'm cutting out Diet Coke since my surgery and I'm looking for that uh, sweet replacement and it's been a nice bridge. I'm not a fan of sparkling waters normally So having the extra flavor from the element mixed in with that sparkling water has been the perfect replacement for me Element is actually offering a free sample pack with any purchase if you use this link uh, You can get free sample pack to try all eight of their flavors They also have a hundred percent no questions asked money-back guarantee So there is zero risk to checking it out. You can go to drink element.com slash Laura Spath. <sighs> okay, here we go. This is what you're left with when you have a couple kids and then spend the majority of your adult life over 250 pounds. I lost over 100 pounds with diet changes only through a zero carb carnivore diet. And even though I was doing some fasting and even though I was really healthy and eating lots of protein, and now it's been over five years that I've been maintaining this weight loss, I still am left with a bunch of excess skin. This is not going away without surgery. And I'm very excited and nervous that tomorrow I get to have surgery and we're gonna take off this literal weight that I have been carrying around with me for what feels like a very long time. I'm ready to just close this chapter and move forward. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be having an extended tummy tuck. Uh, extended means it's just wider, right? A normal tummy tuck might just be this width, but it's gonna go from hip to hip. Pull all this down, take all of this off, stretch it down. They're also doing some liposuction to my flanks. Without that, you kind of end up with this like dog-eared sides. And so that's what's really going to help make things shape the way they're supposed to be back before all of this. I didn't realize until I had a consultation with a plastic surgeon that I also have some pretty severe diastasis recti, which is the separation of the ab muscles. Uh, that can happen from having kids and then also just from carrying around this weight. So they're going to go in and sew my ab muscles back together again. Uh, this distension that happens when you're all sucked in and then how far out the back can come, that happens when your abdominal wall is really weak. And so they will tighten this up and almost leave you in this permanent state of like back where it should be. One of the best ways to fix this is with surgery. Same thing with the skin. There is nothing, nothing, that is gonna get rid of this skin without surgery. And so we're excited to do that. I have my bag all packed, ready to go for tomorrow. I have a set of pajamas in here that are gonna be buttoned up just so it's easier for me to get in and out of. Um, I don't eat carbs. I've been extra clean leading up to this surgery, doing some extra fasting just to make sure that my inflammation is low as possible and I can have everything heal as best as possible. Um, what's interesting is they really push protein after your surgery uh, and so rather than any type of sugary protein drinks I am just going to be bringing along my own dried meats. I hear that nausea after surgery is often a problem and so I have carnivore snacks and some of my own homemade dried meats that I feel like uh, are going to be light, something that I can just nibble on. Um, I'm not eating something really heavy. It's almost like a cracker, but it's just dried meat. So I'm getting lots of protein in, but I'm also taking it easy on my stomach recovering from surgery. 
Other than that, I just have my prescriptions, which I picked up already, uh, a few little toiletries, but I am staying in a care facility for one night only. And so I really don't need too much stuff. Uh, I just wanted to be prepared. I created a little recovery area in our master bedroom. I have a lift medical recliner chair, a little hospital side table where I can put things in easy reach. And I got a walker with a basket on the front. I didn't actually ever end up using the walker, so I would hold off if you're looking for what to buy. I also had a station with all of my meds, instructions for my meds, and some supplements that I was going to take post-surgery. But in general, my plan was to camp out here. I ended up sleeping in this chair for the first month. It was a lifesaver. <laughs> You know what's wild is that, which is like it's little things that I can't think of. This is like the last time I have to like lift my belly to dry underneath of it after a shower. That used to be, or it is still, just like such a process. <laughs> my surgery was at 7 in the morning, which meant I had to be there at 6 in the morning in order to prep. I was given the instructions of no eating or drinking anything, including water, starting at 10 p.m. the night before. I had done consultations with multiple surgeons and was quoted prices everywhere from $10,000 to $37,000. The surgeon I picked, total cost was $20,000. After getting my IV started for fluids and getting all prepped, the doctor came back and drew me up and gave me final instructions to get ready for surgery. He removed three and a half pounds of skin and a couple of liters of fat from the liposuction. My old belly button hole was completely removed and they were able to cut a new slot for the new one. How you feeling, babe? I'm okay so far. Doctor said you did great and everything went perfectly. I'm at a care facility, so they wouldn't let anybody else in surgery, so Chris met me here. But this is where I'll stay the first 24 hours at a, like a recovery center, which is an, honestly, like I already love it. And it's already worth it. They are able to just kind of like manage everything and help me learn how to deal with this. And it's nice. Doctor said he'll be here about nine in the morning to see you, or before nine. I can't look at it yet, but the nurse told me to feel it and I almost started crying, but it hurts too bad to cry. <laughs> it's just so wild. It's all gone. <laughs> well, I actually am not in pain. I think obviously still the anesthesia and then here at this facility they gave me IV pain meds. So just feeling groggy, but no pain so far. I mostly slept off and on for the first 24 hours, but I was very grateful to be monitored at the facility the first night. I had called ahead to my surgeon to make sure that I would get IV fluids without sugar in them. I wore leg pump compressions for the first night in the recovery center and I brought my own noise machine, my retainers, chapstick, phone charger. I had such dry mouth that I was just drinking tons of water and nibbling on my meat chips to take my pain meds. Hold, restricts the circulation. You don't want that and heat brings too much blood flow, and you don't want that either. So no heat or cold. All legs. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said do not recline until you feel like you want to recline, okay? Because the body wants to start in a sitting position like this, and not towards. You can walk. Can I get it? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm just 
the only movement I was doing was walking back and forth to the bathroom. We had installed a lifted toilet seat with handles on the side, which was so crucial for me getting up and down off the toilet. I highly recommend that. A recliner is a must in general, but the lifted chair made it so that I didn't have to use my abs and my core to be able to stand up. After that muscle repair, any movement that involves your core is really excruciating. This allowed me to be a lot more independent right away and I didn't need help actually getting up and down because the chair lifted me almost all the way up. Day three was when I finally started to get an appetite back and I was able to eat something other than meat chips. I just found I got full very quickly because of my stomach muscle repair. Day four, I was able to take my first post-surgery shower and get a look at my incision and my belly button for the first time. I had two drains that I clipped to a lanyard around my neck while I showered. After my shower, I ended up sitting in a chair for a while in a robe while I dried my hair and got myself ready. And then right at the end, I stood up just to throw a couple curls in my hair. I took lots of breaks and the whole process was exhausting, but I felt really good to be clean. I am day four post-op and I just took my first shower and it was amazing. I quit taking any narcotics um, or like prescription pain medication about five o'clock yesterday. So I'm almost 24 hours with just Tylenol ibuprofen. I'm pretty surprised at that myself. It's not that bad. I feel like tightness from the muscle repair. I feel like, you know, I can't take a real deep breath, but other than that, like I don't feel a lot of pain. So I feel like a brand new person. I got clean clothes on. I washed my compression garment. Uh, I got a shower in. I like threw a couple curls in. I feel like a whole brand new person at this point. My surgery was on a Wednesday and I actually went back to work starting on Monday. Not something I would recommend. The only reason why it worked for me was the fact that I was already off of pain meds, which meant I wasn't drowsy all the time. I also work from home. I got this little laptop stand to keep everything off of my lap and I wasn't feeling the weight of the computer uh, on my stomach. I also had the flexibility to take breaks if I needed to. Uh, and I had lots of help. Chris is a stay-at-home dad, so he was here full-time to help me as much as I needed. I really wouldn't suggest going back to work that early. Um, it was several weeks before I felt like I could sit up in a proper chair. I really spent the next three weeks, essentially, just sleeping in this chair, eating, working, and getting up to go to the bathroom. Like, this chair was my life for the first three weeks. The first time I left the house post-surgery was for my one-week follow-up appointment on day six. I went back to my surgeon and he removed all the steri strips that were around my incision, checked on my belly button, made sure everything was healing properly and I didn't have any fluid buildup, and then he took out one of my drains. For the next week, I was in a really good routine of walking to the mailbox, getting a little movement in, working full time, resting in my chair. I filmed that other what I eat video for you guys. And then on my two week appointment, I went back and got my second drain removed, thankfully. Right at the two week mark is when I actually went to a restaurant for the first time. I even tried driving. I sat at the table for the first time with the family and was able to have a meal. I even braved Costco a few days before Christmas, which ended up not being too terrible because I could lean on the cart for some support and I just had somebody else do all of the heavy lifting. Two and a half weeks post-op was Christmas Eve and I was able to make it to Christmas Eve service with the family. I just wore sweatpants and a blazer. I still couldn't wear regular pants, but Christmas morning I was able to spend some time on the couch sitting upright, propped up with pillows to enjoy Christmas with the family. At three weeks post-op, I started getting regular lymphatic drainage massages. I wish I would have started them sooner had I known that that was okay. But more than anything, it's important that you get somebody who is certified in this specific type of post-surgery massage. Uh, it shouldn't hurt. It's a very light touch that she's using in order to help reduce swelling, move all that fluid out of my body, uh, and make sure I'm not forming any hard nodules from the liposuction. And here I am at just over four weeks post-op. I feel like I'm almost standing up straight. Uh, if I try to pull those shoulders back as I'm standing up, I feel tightness. 
in my muscle repair. That's the place where I'm still feeling the most tight, but everything is healing very nicely. I know like weird belly buttons is a concern with a tummy tuck. My incision uh, is healing really well, actually. It goes all the way around. I think over time it will continue to fade, uh, but I'm really pleased with my overall results. I still have some swelling. You can tell things are a little swollen and that is very normal. I'm only just over a month out. You know, swelling is expected to continue for even up to six months. Um, but I absolutely, I, <laughs> like this is, this is me. I can't even uh, comprehend that. And it still is, it doesn't feel real. You know, like I have no more big lump sticking out of all of my clothes. I wore a dress for the first time the other day and just got ready. It's, it's wild. I, I don't know if mentally I'm ever gonna truly grasp um, what this means. And it sounds like I'm being really dramatic, but I'm truly telling you, I feel like it's changed my life in the sense that I just feel more comfortable in my own skin. Um, all I've ever wanted is to be able just to get dressed in the morning and throw on jeans and a t-shirt and not have to worry about all the skin hanging out, um, my stomach, my shape, you know, like just, I wanna wear jeans and a t-shirt and I have everything spilling out over the top of it. Um, which kind of leads to people asking, am I going to get my boobs done? Am I going to get my arms done? Like, yeah, I have excess skin on my arms, but I have no plans to do anything else at this point. I know things like my arms and my thighs, if I exercise at all, which I don't do, um, would tighten up. And they did previously when I was doing more exercise. So I know I can make a small impact to things like my arms and thighs, but more than anything, like, the stomach was just so much that it wasn't going anywhere no matter what I did and the only way to get rid of it was with surgery. Um, and I'm not also gonna be, this is very, I don't dress like this, only on YouTube for all of you. Um, this, I, I just wanna wear normal clothes. I'm not trying to be in a bikini competition or you know, uh, be out partying or doing anything. I just wanna wear normal clothes and feel like myself in my body and I have achieved that where you know, I actually haven't worn like jeans yet and I haven't worn too many real clothes yet because everything still is pretty tender that I don't want things super tight. Um, so I'm not quite sure if my pant size has changed yet or not, but all I know is this is the best thing that I've ever done and it was worth every penny and I have absolutely no regrets. Just if you're thinking about doing it, clear your calendar. You need to take it slow for a very long time um, and make the best decision for you. But I absolutely have no regrets. If you have questions or you wanna know more about the process, I don't plan to post like super regular updates about this unless you want them or you have a lot of questions that you want me to ask. Uh, maybe in a few more months, I'll show you how things are healing. But for now, let's eat meat and get healthy. <laughs> Hope you have a great day.